Chapter 17, Second Order DJ said a Martian dust storm like this usually happens every five years, and it can last over a month. It looked magnificent when it arrived, towering high like that. We used to talk about it non-stop because it was so very strange and new to us. But weeks passed by. We used to look out the window every day. But the view always looked the same. It started emptying our brains. We got sick of looking out at nothing and started looking inside. Some of us rediscovered old pastimes, telling stories by a fire while eating and drinking and playing something in the key of D. Others finally found a time to do things they've been putting off for a while. Lifting something heavy, reading old books, and nesting a new chick. One day, we ran out of wood to keep the fire going, and the Martian nights were getting cold. We had to start sleeping inside our clunky spacesuits to stay warm. But even then, some of us couldn't go to bed without something warm to drink. Soon, we ran out of that too. This put Beelzebub on a mission. Looking at the map, the nearest store was around 3 kilometers east of our bunker. DJ said it's suicidal to go, alone. Beelzebub was relieved and asked who would like to tag along. It was quiet for a good minute. The next day, I suited up with Beelzebub towards Chesterton's bar. And off we went, eastwards. It was terrific to be out, but the wind wasn't that strong. I don't think anyone could fly a kite in this, I thought. What was going to be a problem was visibility, and DJ warned us about getting powdery Martian dust inside our suits. He said it happened to him once, and it wasn't pleasant. After walking over two kilometers through the dust, we bumped into a fence that stretched around our destination. The only way inside was either to walk around it or knock down a portion to cut through it. Beelzebub saw a way to break it down. But wait, I thought. We don't know what this fence is for. I asked Beelzebub, why do you think but the wind was too noisy. Beelzebub didn't hear a word. He kept walking, just a few meters, and then he reached the entrance to Chesterton's bar. I followed his footsteps, but I really couldn't see through all the dust. I don't know what I stepped on, but it was soft like butter. <laughs>